So let's talk about energy. And in this video, I'm going to talk about energy and cellular respiration, the three stages or phases, and one of them is called glycolysis. Then we'll talk about what happens when oxygen is not available, which leads to something called fermentation. Brought to you by Curious Marine Land. All right, now let's start here. And pretty much if the source of energy for life on the planet is sunlight. However, the source of energy for cells is ATP. So let's talk about how do you actually get there? How do you do that? Well, we got to recognize that there's two types of organisms, really. Ones that can use the solar energy to produce organic compounds we call sugars and carbohydrates, and ones who get their energy by breaking down those sugars and carbohydrates by eating other organisms and all that sense. All right, now, look at this, this little critter. He's eating uh, autotroph, something that produces is its own food to their process of, cell, of photosynthesis. And this is just a quick reminder. We have um, pretty much the flow of energy through ecosystems is photosynthesis is going to take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That carbon dioxide is released by organisms doing cell respiration. Whether they're anaerobic or aerobic, we'll talk about that later. Now, here's glucose. So photosynthesis produces glucose, gives off oxygen. Organisms that do cell respiration take in oxygen and eat the glucose and get ATP. You know, ATP isn't part of the cycle. It's used for the cells to do work. All right. There's going to be some noises in this next section. So think about it like this. We break down carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and we can get nourishment. We can get chemical energy that we call ATP. So we got our here's our here's our mitochondria. Now I'll talk about anaerobic and aerobic later on. But let's look. Alright, so we got our different food products. So food is gonna ultimately get broken down like this model that I used before. This is a glucose molecule, and when you consume it, you're gonna break it down and through it and go through a series of changes to get ultimately chemical energy called ATP. Alright, so you know, if you have oxygen, you're going to completely reduce or break down that glucose. So it requires some enzymes. And I know the noise is annoying, but that's the real goal is to get ATP. Now, what goes back to that earlier cycle in that picture is we give off carbon dioxide, which fortunately plants are going to use for photosynthesis. All right, so let's get rid of the noise and move on. So here's the thing, we got different, uh, all right, so ATP allows for our cells to do work. And the main point of this slide is uh, to get ATP so our cells can do work. That's the ultimate source of energy for cells to do work. And your muscles, look, 10 million ATP per second, that's how much they're consuming. This is going to be huge for being able to do large amounts of work and you know large energy for to sustain you over a long period of time. And that's why you got to keep adding fuel, which is what your food is going to be. So I already um, mentioned this earlier, but pretty much heterotrophs get their, their energy by eating things. Quick review on the cellular level, it's ATP. All right, ATP is your chemical energy. Now, where we're going to transition next in the end of this video and the next video is we're going to talk about how you actually get this molecule to be made. So now what I want to do is switch gears and talk about our comparison between photosynthesis and cell respiration. In the earlier video, earlier part of the video, you saw the little, little critter eating it, um, some plants, and getting energy. Well, the plants are going to use light energy. You can check out my photosynthesis videos those if you want to see those. Okay. Now, I need to mention another molecule. So we've talked about glucose, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, ATP. There's one other molecule that's the intermediate. And that is a hydrogen carrier molecule that's used both in photosynthesis and cell respiration. Sometimes we call it an electron carrier. In photosynthesis, we call it NADP. In cell respiration, we have two of them. And they're called NAD and FAD. So take a look at it like this. NAD, as part of cell respiration, it picks up a hydrogen, and then it becomes this molecule. Now, look, if we just gather food and immediately turn it into energy, most of it will be lost as heat. 
So it's an intermediate step. We break it down and we take that food, that glucose molecule or other molecules that we're breaking down, and we transition it through intermediate steps and we store that energy ultimately to get ATP. See, the last step of cell respiration is this. Take these NADHs, take those Hs off, and we get ATP. All right? But that's going to be the next video. Just So this is just a reminder of the hydrogen carrier molecule. So we got... Um, in the light reaction of photosynthesis, NADPH carries a hydrogen. This hydrogen gets carried ultimately to the dark reaction, also called Calvin, and that's where your glucose is made. Now, glucose gets broken down, and I'll talk about that shortly, and you release carbon dioxide. Well, here's the CHO. Well, there's the CNO. The H gets picked up and ultimately goes through this process of stripping those H's off, gets you a lot of ATP. And oxygen comes in, picks it up, and it leaves as water. All right, I'm going to do another video devoted to this whole handout. So let's talk about what exactly is cell respiration. Okay, cell respiration is a multiple-step process. It's not just one reaction like the formula you saw before. Um, so it starts with breaking glucose down. All right, and it does not require oxygen. All right. It does take a little ATP to get it started. So let's watch what happens. So here's, this is a six carbon chain. This is a two carbon chain, a two carbon chain. So now at this point for my students, I'm gonna introduce another molecule. We talk about carbon dioxide, glucose, oxygen, water, ATP, NADH, and now pyruvate. And that's what glucose gets broken down into. A two molecules, he says three carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, everything can be accounted for. All right, so glucose gets broken down into pyruvic acid. Now, it actually produces 4 ATP, but if you look here, it took 2 to get this process started. So we always say we gain 2 ATP for every 1 glucose that's broken in half, meaning glycolysis. Okay, take a look. 1, 2, anaerobic, aerobic. Do you notice number 1 is the same? Glycolysis starts, and then if oxygen is not available, we do something called fermentation. That's what I'm going to close this video with. If oxygen is available, we do aerobic respiration called citric acid and electron transport. And I'm going to do another video about those two. So I want to close this up by giving you this option. So glucose has happened. You've broken down um, glucose through the process of glycolysis into what's called pyruvic acid or pyruvate. If there's no oxygen, you do ethanol or lactic acid fermentation. There's two types. It depends on what type of organism you are. Animals, we do lactic acid. This is the burning sensation you feel when you work out. Bacteria, yeast, they do alcohol fermentation. So we're going to finish this video by going down this pathway. Next video, we're going to start and go down this pathway and say what happens here. Okay. Now, so let's do this. And... One more look at here. So with oxygen, we do this, and we get a whole bunch of ATP. With now, what I want to do is do this. When we, when there's no oxygen, if the fork shows with or without oxygen. When there's no oxygen, we're going to do something called fermentation. Okay, and when that's the case, we call this anaerobic respiration. And so I'm just giving you a couple of different reviews. So without oxygen, anaerobic, and that's glycolysis starts both of these. Then you have pyruvic acid. It's kind of a holding pattern. When glucose goes inside a cell, it immediately is broken in half through what's called glycolysis. And then you're in this holding pattern. Without oxygen, you stay in the cytoplasm and you break it down. If it's not available, if it's available, you're going to go in the mitochondria. If I were to draw, I should draw a little circle here and label that and then do a little membrane, we have a mitochondria. Okay, so there's two types of fermentation. So let's talk about that. We'll do we'll do uh, this, with, we're gonna do another video for this part right here. Okay, so alcohol fermentation. Basically, the whole purpose of all of these reactions is to recycle this, there it is, NAD. If you have NAD, you can keep doing glycolysis and you get a little bit of ATP. So yeast, um, is going to evaporate car the carbon dioxide and it's going to store the it's going to evaporate the, the alcohol 
and it's going to the it bubbles and the carbon dioxide are going to cause you know cause the say bread to rise. So alcohol fermentation is one type. It depends on your organism. Alcohol is um, basically yeast or bacteria sometimes. I mean when they make pretty much beer almost alcoholic beverages is are basically a result of this so really alcohol is a waste product of a yeast or a bacteria it's yeast pee okay now uh, just elaborate on lactic acid ferment, uh, fermentation so lactic acid is a less harmful uh, acid than but it does feel painful when you it accumulates in your body which is what causes your muscles to get sore as you see down here now um, let's move on and so here's here's so lactic acid is it's it actually helps um, some bacteria will produce it to help mold, uh, cause um, cheeses to be cured and things like that so uh, why do you do fermentation eventually glycolysis is going to stop when you're, if that stops you get no ATP but because you know, again you need to recycle the NADH so if you do that, you can still get some ATP. That's why we do fermentation. All right. So fermentation happens so cells can recycle their NAD. That's the big per deal. They happen so you can keep doing glycolysis. If you do that, you can at least get some free NAD so they can go back and do glycolysis where they pick up hydrogens again. So here's just a more detailed look. Here's glycolysis for um, and then. Here's lactic acid fermentation. So you see what it does? It recycles those NADs so glycolysis can happen. Same thing happens with ethanol. Except the difference between ethanol and lactic acid is the species that does it. And if it's a beet, yeast or a bacteria, they're going to produce ethyl, ethanol. There it is. All right, they're going to give off the carbon dioxide. And here, but it this does the same purpose. It recycles NADs so that you can do the next round of glycolysis. In my next video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, what happens when oxygen is present. All right. Brought to you by Curious Marineland. Thanks for watching.